The aesthetic modders are vastly different from most organisms, as they do not gear themselves for the sole priority of survival. Their gear does not cater towards the meta, rather it caters towards being aesthetically pleasing. The bottom line is that they care less for their survival than for their own drip. Much like them, the role players are a species that forego survivability in favor of doing dumb things. Come along with me as we view these spectacular creatures evolve from average PMCs into truly insane individuals. Most PMCs begin much like the final stage of the aesthetic modders. Modding towards a certain theme acts as a gateway into roleplaying. Once again, they may take after a variety of real-world examples, a Vietnam GI, any number of modern militaries, or heroes from the past. They use these weapons to varying levels of success, but death does not concern them. All that matters is their commitment to the bit. At the second stage, the organisms still act like normal PMCs. Themed modding continues, and they form a large pack of roleplayers. There are nearly infinite possibilities as to what the squad will roleplay. Here are a few. The most common is that of the Soviets of World War II. The creatures equip themselves with Mosins, PPSHs, and one will carry the Tokarev. They charge their opponents with reckless abandon, hoping to overwhelm them with a wave of bodies and a hailstorm of bullets. They charge not because they are fearless, but because taking one step back is perhaps even more dangerous than charging forwards. They are wonderful creatures, and their weapons, though old, are still quite effective. The next theme is that of the Australian GI. Tailored to those who served in Vietnam, these creatures ditch their helmets in exchange for boonie hats and the SA-58. The stock SA-58 may kick like a mule, but it damn sure hits like one too. Of course, copious amounts of I was only 19 are blasted into their ears as they fight for their lives.
The final stage sees the complete abandonment of basic playing and the full embrace of VoIP. No longer will they simply try to survive. They now act in very particular ways for the bit. The most common creatures of this stage are the UN Peacekeepers. The Blueberry Armor and the Stock M4 are not ideal for survival, but that is fine considering they are roleplaying as the UN. Beyond throwing food rations or medical supplies at people, they tend to just stand around. Shouldn't you be stopping them? We have an order now to. Contrary to the peacekeepers, who do literally nothing, the LARPers try way too hard. They are most often equipped with what they believe to be the loadout of a military squad. Two riflemen, a corpsman, a breacher, and a designated marksman. They overuse VoIP, giving out callouts they learned from the movies. All we do here. Room clear. Room clear. That being said, they can be quite effective.
I'm hit. I'm hit hard. You good? I'm fine. Hey, friendly? Friendly. Friendlies. Friendly. The final example is that of the DEA. These strange creatures likely watch way too much Breaking Bad, and are equipped with the ADAR, M870, Glock, and flashbangs. They prowl through the factory, demanding that the one unlucky PMC surrender. They then confiscate any painkillers or injectors an individual might have. DEA, drop your weapon and come out with your hands up, asshole! Drop your weapon! Come on out! Come on out! Do you have any injectors or painkillers on you? Drop them now. Jesus Christ. If the last PMC complies, they will be escorted to safety. Those that do not, are not treated so respectfully. Of course, scabs cannot be reasoned with. The role players are fascinating, as the world they inhabit is so incredibly against them. Even in a sweat swamp nightmare like Tarkov, the persistence of those wishing to have fun pays off. They are exceptionally rare and may never be seen. I suppose that is what makes each encounter so incredible. <laughs> 